hi guys welcome and welcome back to the channel today in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i made this simple straight palazzo pants so if this is something you're interested in learning how to make definitely keep on watching so to begin with this tutorial you want to go ahead and place your fabric on fold in the sense that it is wide enough to cut the front pattern of this pants so in essence we are saying your hip measurement divided by four plus an extra two and a half or three inches for your crotch area then for the length of the trouser you want to measure from your waistline to where you want your trouser length to get to then add your allowance for folding for the down part of the trouser and then for the waist portion of the trouser for this trouser i cut my waistband with the trouser so that is a total of about four inches added to the length of my trouser then you want to go ahead and cut that out here you can see me marking out the waistband portion of the trouser and then i'm coming down to that line to mark our crotch area an easy way to get your crotch measurements is to sit on a chair and take your measurement from your waistline to the top of your chair and that's basically it on this line you want to mark your hip measurement divided by four and then extend it out with about two and a half to three inches for your crouch area now you want to draw a line from your waistline to your hip line with width your hip measurement and then from your hip line come up by one and a half inch and then from that one and a half inch marking draw a curve line to your crotch area and then you go ahead and impute your exact waist measurement on your waistline and your exact hip measurement on your hip line and then outline it and extend it to the waistband area Now you want to go ahead and cut it out. Now to cut the back piece, we are going to take one of these front pieces and place it on another fabric on fold, leaving one and a half inch from the top of the waistband. So now we are going to mark two inches from the crouch line all around and then at the crouch point, we are going to take two and a half inches and then continue with two inches all the way down to the end of the trouser length. And then from the top of the waist, we are going to slant it down to the side of the waist. Bear in mind that we already placed the front pattern on the back pattern piece one and a half inch lower. So in a situation where you placed it but you don't mark out the exact one and a half inch, maybe it will be excess, then you just mark out that one and a half inch point and then slant it down to the side of the waist and cut out your pattern. The reason for elongating the back crouch so that it is one and a half inch higher than the front is because you are more fuller at the back because of your butt. So the extra one and a half inch helps to create more coverage. And that's it as far as cutting is concerned for these pants we are done very quick and easy for this I'm not going to be using pockets I already attached my waistband to the pants so now let's get started with the sewing process placing both front pieces with right side facing you want to sew half inch along the crouch area and then the same thing for the back placing both back pieces with right side facing you want to sew 
half inch along the patch area. After that, now you want to place your right side of the front pattern to the right side of the back pattern and sew your sewing allowance. For this, I'm using half an inch for both sides of the pants. You want to sew both sides of the pants, but on your zipper side, you want to measure away your waistband and then from that waistband marking, you want to measure away your zip length and then from that point sew down mind you for your zip length you want to use an opening of around seven to eight inches minus the waistband um allowance so minus the waistband allowance from your actual waist opening for your um trouser zipper or skirt zipper is supposed to be from seven inches to about eight or nine inches depending on the wideness of your hip now you're going to go ahead and pin the front and back crouch points together and then sew a straight line from one leg to the other with half an inch of sewing allowance now the next step is to fold the bottom part of the trouser if you weave it yours just as i weave mine you can fold your allowance in once your folding allowance but if you did not then you want to double fold it you want to double fold it and then this is what mine is looking like so far well even if nepal is to see his light for this next clip i shall made my video i shall make the clip see them now useless people they see the lights and it was not yet time to see this light though but not yet time for the see the light the next step now is to turn the waistband uh, sorry the waist portion of the trouser with elastic you don't want to stretch the elastic while placing it on the trouser you don't want to stretch it you just want to place it on the waist portion of the trouser from the wrong side though from the wrong side and then use the zigzag stitch to sew on the edge of the elastic to the edge of the waist and then use the elastic to fold in the waist portion so now you're going to stitch this down in between your side seams and in between your crouch line that is the middle joining crouch line so basically you want to do a stitch in the ditch Now you want to go ahead and install your zipper. Now you're basically done with your sewing process, you can go ahead and iron it out. To get the perfect ghetto line at the front and the back of the pants, this is what I do. I just try to locate the midpoint of both side seams. 
like the side seam and the crouch area seam i drain them together while ironing i just fill it with my fingers and place them together while ironing so that way it ensures that you have your ironed line your ghetto line at the middle of your front and at the middle of your back Now that we are done with the ironing process on one side, we want to flip to the other side and repeat the same ironing process. After everything, this is what my pants is looking like and this is what yours should look like as well. Thank you for staying up until the end of this video. I really hope you found it useful and helpful. I really loved these pants. I really loved these pants. Though it was not for me, it was for my sister. But I really loved the invisible waistband effect on these pants. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked this trouser pattern. And comment down below your thoughts on this pattern. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this slant shoulder top that she was wearing with these pants. So stay tuned for that. Bye guys.